Today we're doing a Commodore 64 test, and I previously mentioned that this is quite a bit of a tricky and frustrating core to get running, and it's not necessarily due to the options of the core itself. It's more or less due to the various formats that run on the core, and approximately 8 out of 10 of them just simply do not function as well as you'd want them to or expect them to. We're going to start it out with uh, Dr. Doom's Revenge, a tape file, and we're going to see what happens. It found the game, and it's loading it. Now, some of you may remember back when the original Commodore 64 was out, you'd have to put games of certain formats in there and literally leave for half hour to an hour and then come back and eventually be able to play them. And this is pretty common for the games that required a bit of loading into memory. And you can see that little box in the bottom there that's flashing that's a load icon you see the background where it's color changing that's the pattern that's correlating to the loading and i tested this out this took about a half hour to get into the game i mean it's ridiculous but it is what it is i mean i'm going to go into other formats and workarounds for this but as of right now if you really really want to play this specific game in this format you're going to be waiting about a half hour so I'm going to exit out of here, because we do not want to spend a half hour just waiting for this one single game to load. Another format we have is a CRT format, which is a cartridge format. And the problem here is that a lot of games are not in this format. There's only a few hundred in this format, but there's thousands in the other formats, such as the tapes and etc. Now what people do is they use an easy flash system to convert these into cartridge formats and you can take a game such as Great Gianna Sisters which normally would run with a keyboard and take forever to load if at all and a guy named Sam took his like I give him big props for taking the time and dedication they convert this into a cartridge that runs on Commodore 64 and it runs fantastic on a simulator so I'm gonna load the Great Gianna Sisters and if you have any bit of history to Gianna Sisters, you'd realize that it is kind of a copycat of a specific game that was on Nintendo. And the company that made the game was not too happy with it. But this game was good for what it was. And they eventually went on and had a, a reboot of this game on 360 as well as PS3. And then they even upped it a little bit more and kind of did like a master version of it on PS4 and on Xbox One. I have it because it was on sale. I picked it up on both systems. It's pretty fun for what it is, but this is the original version on Commodore 64 converted by Sam so it runs with a joystick and cartridge format and it loads pretty fast. So I'm glad to have this on my Mini NES right now. Got a unique soundtrack pretty good gameplay and you could quickly tell what game this is a copycat of you played many clones many hacks of this but here we go and I could only ascertain what the second level would look like but as many uh, M Mario clones as I've played over the years I mean I would consider this the best I've played I'm entitled because I've I've pretty much bought every Mario game I could possibly muster up the money and encouraged to buy over the years. Gee, I wonder what the second level is gonna look like. Hmm, that looks pretty familiar. I'm kind of wondering if I keep going, if I'll have a warp zone akin to the one in 1-2 one, in Mario 1. But uh, we're going to move on to another game. And uh, one thing I'd like to show you guys, and I'm going to do it once I get into the next game. We're going to briefly try out Rick Dangerous, in a cartridge format of course. And the people who went on to make the Tomb Raider series originated with this game, and it's loosely based off of Indiana Jones but here we go now that I have this loaded and the game's loaded I'm gonna go into my retro art settings quick menu controls 
I have my user one device type set to voice joystick. Then I'm going to go to options. And for the most part, you'd want to just leave these alone. You may need to change the model number. But the drive type and drive true emulation, you do not really want to mess with. Otherwise, you could break the ability to even load a game at all. I have retro joy enabled and uh, controller type the joystick. You could also change it to keyboard. So you may, depending on how finicky a particular game is, you may have to change between them. But right now I have it set to joystick. So I'm going to back up, resume. And there's uh, two things you can pull up. One is the GUI right here. And normally you can pull that when you exit out and push start. And I'm pushing the select button on my controller to be able to use the cursor. If I turn select off, then I can't use it. So I'm doing select, I'm going to resume. And if it gets a little sensitive, just use your analog to get to the resume part. And while you're in game, you can push the Y button. And that pulls up the virtual keyboard, which I'm not gonna really need for this game. So I'm playing Rick Dangerous. And look how quick this loads in comparison to the Doom that we played. It's a cartridge and it's almost instantaneous loading. But this is a real popular favorite of old PC formats and I played this on the ZX Spectrum and it was a fun game. But I'm liking the Commodore 64 version now that I have it running. So I'm really, really liking the Commodore 64 core. I mean, it plays games great once you have the right format. And I died. So it's almost like, it's a challenging game. But we're going to move on to another interesting one. This is a yet another one that was converted into a cartridge format that would normally be hard to play. It's Mayhem in Monsterland, also converted by Sam. And again, I give major props to him for taking the time and dedication to do this. He's a true hobbyist, and I'm going to have to email this guy and really thank him. I mean, I, these games would not be playable without somebody who had the absolute patience and perseverance to do this, just like this. I mean, it's great. So Mayhem in Monsterland, one of the other popular games on Commodore 64, playable in cartridge format, but not necessarily playable in the other formats. This is interesting because... You go through two different types of levels. You go through like a sad level that has kind of dull and mundane colors and graphics to happy levels that are real bright and colorful. And the object is to collect enough of a certain object, which would be stars, I believe, to move to the next section or level. The stars, you have to collect 113. <laughs> I'm starting out in a sad level, and you can see right away that it's kind of dull and mundane graphics, but I mean, this is a great game for when it came out. It's a pinnacle achievement at the time, you know, comparably to, say, Sega Genesis that is coming out around that same time. This is supposed to be a, a pretty challenging game. I mean, a lot of people have never even beaten the entire game. But once you collect the set number of uh, quotas that you need, you can move on to the next section, which would be the happy levels. And I'm not going to get too involved in this because I'd like to show you guys a few more games, but you get a little gist for how this one is. But this is uh, the Mayhem in Monsterland. We have uh, Sword of Honor, which was another game that's great and converted over to a cartridge format. And this is one that... It's cool. I'm just going to do a brief play of this. It has really cool music, I mean... And some of these games, like, you get on the CPC Amstrad, the ZX Spectrum, and on here, you have trainers with them. And that's kind of cool, because when you play a game that's a little more challenging, since you do not necessarily have save state ability like you do in some of the other cores, the trainers can come in handy with something like on unlimited lives and such, but I'm just going to let the game play as is. I really like this music. For an 8-bit system, this music is really, really good. And 
And again, I'm I'm really appreciative of the people who took their time out of their day to convert these over to a cartridge format so they're playable for more people. Because we do not want to sit here for a half hour to an hour just loading this game just to get to this part, you know? And I, as you see, I can't just go up and mash at the enemy. There is a bit of a strategic element to this game where you have to parry, dodge, etc. But I'm liking this game. This one's called Sword of Honor, if I remember that correctly. And I showed you sort of Fargo in my dungeon crawler video. And the last one we're going to go over today is going to be Stunt Car Racer. And this is kind of cool because I'm going to do a quick evolution of games here. And I'm going to show you what this game ended up becoming eventually. Here's Stunt Car Racer on Commodore 64. And again, we have that load pretty instantaneous. Now, as I mentioned, there's a lot of formats that do not run well on here. I'm going to make sure you know both of the formats that run really well on here before this video is over, just to make things easier on you guys. This is still the cartridge format, and I'm just getting into the game here. And I've always liked these Hot Wheels style games, and the other two games I'm going to show you before this video ends are games that are pretty much derivative of this game. This is pretty much the root of all the evil that became those games later on. But I remember back in the day um, seeing this game in magazines and just really wanting to play it. I wanted a Commodore 64 so bad I asked for it for Christmas when I was a kid. But I didn't get one. I ended up getting an Atom computer instead and what really sucked is I had a, a schoolmate that made a bunch of games like Dragon's Lair and such and put them on floppy disk for me and gave me them and I was so excited I'm like waiting to Christmas morning so I could play them and I got an Atom computer but for what it's worth the Atom computer gave me plenty of entertainment but it also ended up going on to be one of the biggest computer flops in history and Commodore 64 went on to be the top selling computer of all time. This is a really fun game and there's two other specific games that come to mind that are just like this. So we're going to move on to the games that are similar to this. And I'm going to be coming back to this because this play is really good on this core. So we have uh, Stunt Car Racer. And we're going to play the game that came out several years later. That's a lot like this. But uh, the other format that works on here is the T64. So we have the CRT and the T64. T64 is a proprietary format that is specifically made for the Vice emulator and... A lot of games were converted into the format, so I mean, if you could do your research and try to find games like the Gianna Sisters and the Mayhem Monsterland game, etc., in the CRT format, but the T64 format lays pretty good too. It loads a little bit slower, but it works quite well. So we're going to move on to uh, Genesis Mega Drive Hard Driving, which is the evolution of the Stunt Car Racer. And there's one thing I used to love doing in this game that I still get a kick out of. Is it me or does that music sound like the beginning of Vacation, the movie, with Chevy Chase? It sounds like Vacation. That complete rip there. So I'm going to play Otto. And unfortunately, the main version of this does not work so well because you have to configure the controls and it's very tricky to do so. So anyways, I could go to the right to do the stunt course or I could go left to do the speed course, but there's something on my right that I love to pay a little visit to each time I play this game. And it never ever gets old, even though I've done it like thousands of times over the years. This little cow just sitting over by the barn here, listen carefully. Gotta hit that cow and get that moo sound. If you remember this game, uh, when you crash, you get these kind of interesting replays. And of course, they made race driving as well. And I'm going to crash on purpose just so you can see one of the instant replays before I quit. There we go, here's our instant replay.
It was cool when you played this in the arcade, you had the cockpit, but the last thing I'm going to show you is the next evolution of this, which was a big phenomenon in Europe, but I caught wind of it, and I was a fan of it for years, and eventually it caught on over here, and it's on PS4 right now. It's called Track Mania, and I'm going to show you a track from Track Mania, which is the truest evolution of Stone Car Racer to hard driving to this. And I've played so many hours of games in this series. It's just so fun. If you're like a hot Wheels fan, you'll love this type of stuff. You gotta love that wall ride there. Insanely challenging. And it turned my engine off, so if I make a mistake, I won't be able to finish this section, which I just made a mistake. You can push the triangle button on the PS4 controller to redo the last section. You can push circle to redo the whole level. But in other track media games in the series, I've actually gotten, like, almost platinum to go on every level. Look, I'm barely skating through here. Am I going to make it? Am I going to make it? Yep, my engine's back on.